with your permission, Please. Sam, may I begin? Thank you. Let's give him a hand for And Cody, a hand for Cody. All right, so where I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with some basic things. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. So uh, from the beginning here, what I'm going to do is we're going to get started with an outside wrist lock, also known as a homote gyaku. So we're going to, he's going to be the attacker. I'm always going to be the defender in, this, in all of these scenarios. So here he's going to grab me, and he's going to step and punch me. He's going to punch and strike him. So all of these are distractions. From here, I'm going to clear, take him down, and take him into a position of control. So that is one way of doing with a, a, a grab. I can do the same thing if he just throws that straight jab, and I can catch him. Or I can distract. Distractions are a major key when it comes to ninjutsu. So as that jab comes, I'll split and hit him in the eyes, or I jab him in the throat, then I'll throw him and control, All right? Now, as you progress in ninjutsu, what ends up happening is that that's not the only thing. We get into situations where I might have to grab the person and say he knows what to do. So he's going to go into the outside wrist lock now. And as he goes, I defend it and catch it in something a little different than as a luchador. From here I catch, I take him down, and I control. Right? So that is onomote gyaku off of a grab, a strike, and a counter. We're going to do the same thing off of a uh, inside wrist lock, the ura gyaku. So he grabs again, I'll clear, I'll strike, and I'll walk him all the way down to the point of controlling, breaking his arm, controlling, hands free, right? Off of the grab. Now, next thing, we can do the same thing off of the punch. He comes in, for those that were here earlier, we use some of that angular movement and that angular striking to clear that. But now, I get cut in. So what do I do? Is I roll through, kick him in the face, and get myself back up. That's right. Let's show him that again, Marlon. <laughs> yes. So, this is the escape. The escape, he gets to the floor lower than the attacker anticipated, follows up with a kick. So everything we teach you, there's counters to. So part of the thing he's working towards now is taking all the stuff below black belt and learn how to counter wrist lock. Now, I'm gonna throw a little wrench at Marlon. Yes, sir. Let me see you do multi gyaku off a kick. Guy kicks, then do a get to a multi gyaku. Sir. Nice. You can do a joint lock off a kick. Let me see the Urugaku or off a kick. Yes, sir. Keep going. Nice. There you go. Very good. So you can uh, you can get any wrist lock, any arm lock off a punch, a kick, or a grab. These are universals. So at Marlon's level, he's thinking, in fact, he's not thinking. He's Musha no man. He's doing these basic techniques at a higher level where. Oh, a guy can throw a kick, a punch, a grab, it doesn't matter, I can get these joint locks. Okay, continue. Okay, now we're going to move on to what's known as a hongyaku. Hongyaku is a goose man. So same thing, it really doesn't matter for Revy's sake. He's just grabbing me and I'm hearing a strike. I'm going to turn, 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 turn. Take his wrist and turn it over, keep it tight to my body, and I pull his elbow in and down. What that does is that it looks like a goose man, basically, for his E. I can press his wrist in. And take them down. That is a honyaku. You can do honyakus, uh, say he does a hooking punch, and again, this we worked earlier, right? I can reach and grab and take him down. Now, again, if I get caught in this, it's kind of a tricky one. Because once I catch the person in a honyaku, you can't go up, you can't go down, or like left or right to escape him. So the escape on this one, as I get cut, it is to step and to kick him over top of me. Okay, do it slower. Watch what he's doing here. The attacker, uh, in this case, Cody, is applying the technique against Marlon. Marlon's going to, because Cody wants to take Marlon to the ground. 
Marlon's going to defeat him by getting to the ground sooner than Cody anticipated. That's what breaks the technique. He gets sooner. You know? That's the. That's very nice. <laughs> Much more. Full speed. Okay. Nice job. Good job. Okay. Continue. Thank you. So those are some basic grid slots. We're going to start dealing with some straight attacks. Say he grabs and I clear and he keeps his arm straight. I can pop his hand up by pressing, by grabbing skin. Rolling it back and walking him back into a moose okay. I can do the same thing off of a jab. If he comes in, I can clear this strap with the shuto, catch under, and take him down with some moose door. Show it against the kick. Sir? Yeah. There it is. This is a door right here. Because Musodori basically means straight arm lock, right? So this is a straight arm lock. This could be a straight arm lock. This is a straight arm lock. Right? The actual term Musodori in Japanese yeah. translates as nothing alike yeah. catch. That's a little bit esoteric. <laughs> nothing alike catch. Or we use a straight arm lock. Very nice. Yeah. So you can see he's doing these techniques not just against the grab, not just against the punch, but also against the kick. Well, the guy's kicking. He's not. Well, after he checks the kick, which he's doing very well with the leg checks, he goes in. He can find the arm. The arm may be up here. The arm may be down. He finds the arm, whether it's the wrist uh, or the elbow joint or whatever. Then he can affect the locking, even against the kick. He just finds the arm. Wherever the guy's arm is going to end up. Continue. Um, so we've got that to the musador. Now we have a musador. A musador is a warrior catch. Uh, basically, again, we'll start off with the grab, I'll clear, but this time when I hit, he reacts and he pulls me in, so that gives me the opportunity to catch his shoulder. When I catch his shoulder here, it makes it very easy for me to kick his leg up and control. Same thing works well if he's doing any sort of hooking punch, if he tries to hook towards my head, I'll distract and I can get under. Again, kick up and control. Right. Now, if I find myself being caught in a mushidori, what I'm going to try to do here is get close to it and spin underneath it. Notice how I have my leg trapped behind his makes the takedown easy. Again, control. Very subtle. That's how Marlon moves for a quick circle. Graceful, very nice. Now, we get into some uh, some throats. So we need uh, our wrist locks, Mommy. our uh, Mommy. Um, okay. arm locks, shoulder locks. Yes, yeah, one do, um, Onikidaki. Let's do Onikidaki and, and then uh, Ogyaku. Ogyaku, yes. Onikidaki next. Yeah. So uh, Onikidaki, yeah, you grab again. I clear, I strike. Again, he gives me that. Bend arm, but I don't have the opportunity to kind of sneak over this one because of his hand position. So I'm going to change my hand position, right? From here, again, I can kick out this way, I can kick out this way, and control. So the biggest key to the onigidaki is getting myself into this T formation. I'm facing this way while Cody's looking that way, and I keep nice and tight, good control of his shoulder again, and from here I can always move into something a little different. Once more. Yes, sir? I'm going to stop you for a second and say freeze. Yes, sir. Position. Freeze. Now, notice the position Marlon's in. How Cody is off balance. We talked about that some that's my she, distance of death. Marlon's in my eye, distance of harmony. Cody's in a really bad position. He's leaning off balance. Marlon's got his arm locked in tight. Marlon's in a good position. Now, if Marlon were in a bad position, rotating this way, Cody could still punch him. That would be a bad technique. But Marlon knows better, because I trained him. <laughs> he's in a better position. It's like playing pool. He's in a better position this way, because he can't get hit. The idea is I attack you, you can't get me. When there's three hits in a fight, he hits air, you hit him, he hits the ground. Boom. 
So uh, we can get into that. Again, hooking punches work well for these kind of things. Hooking punches work good. So if he does a hook, I can hit, hit, and catch him. Or if he goes a lower hooking punch, where I'll drop like we did earlier, right? And I can wrap him up into a reverse. That's called Ura Onikidaki. Ura Onikidaki yeah. Inside demon, Onikidaki means demon crusher. What a cute sounding name for a technique. <laughs> we teach demon crushers here in intention martial arts. That was the first word, Japanese word I learned. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go into an Ogyaku. Um, Ogyaku's work well, Papa grabs. Again, he grabs, I clear, I strike, and I take him. I can just throw him if I'd like. Or Show him that one in slow motion. I can follow him. Slow motion. As Watch him take the shoulder. Look, it's all, all the way up. Oh, that's a big. Now he's working the upper joint. You got three joints in the arm. You got the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. This one's a shoulder lock. Yeah. What I like about the Ogyaku is that it flows really well into a straight arm bar. Again, he grabs, I clear, I strike. I continue the momentum into catching him here. One of the things I like, it also works very well off the straight strikes. So if you throw the straight strike, I strike. Again, I can punch, throw a shuto, chisel, or a fingertip strike to the throat or eyes. And again, there's my takedown. Here's my control. So, We've gone through wrist locks, arm locks, shoulder locks. A couple of throws now. Let's see I, a counter to Ogyaku. Oh, yes, sir. So he goes. Nice. Okay. Go ahead, Once more. Once more. Don't stop moving, and he stops moving. Again. Ogyaku. Sacrifice, though, sir? Anything you want to do? Good. Very nice. Again. Very nice. So he's going with the force. Do it in slow motion. And watch as, as uh, Cody takes that arm. Ar you know, Marlon's not resistant. He's going with it to take him down. Isn't that nice? Very smooth. It looks flowing. It looks like he's dancing. That's what it sort of is. <laughs> it continues. Yeah, sir. All right, so now we're going to go into a Halai Gosh, which is a leg sweep. Which one do you do? Uh, Halai? Uh, oh, yeah, we do uh, Osoto Gake, rear sweep. Oh, okay, Osoto. Big outside. Oh, it's big in here. Japanese. Soto is outside. Gake means to hook. Okay. Big rear sweep. So from here, I get grabbed. I clear. I strike. I slide in three feet in a line. All right, again. Do a rear sweep. The same works well with punching, as I'm here. And I like punching and counter striking. Because then I'll hold on to flash, his ear step, and take him down in the same way. Right now, if he tends to want to do that to me, so he steps and he goes for it, I'm going to lift. One that I like because of the position that he is, is to slide him straight in. I have to take him into the, I'm sorry. Once sorry. more. I forgot the name. Uchi Gaku. Uchi Gaku. Inside. Oh, it's big. Uchi's inside. Gake's hook. Once more. Beautiful. Now, do, this, do the pick up with the leg. He's going to the Hichino Kamai. One leg posture. Watch how he, slow motion. As he goes in, he feels the attack. He picks the leg up. Just picks it up and steps and re-steps. He could kick from there. Boom, oh, that'll take him out. <laughs> he steps in there, he can do all kinds of stuff. Very nice. Uh, now we can go into the Ganseki Nage, the slinging to the big drop. Let's do, before we go, let's do a honey ghost where he honey kicks ghost. to the side of the egg, the side of the knee. Yes. So same thing, he, let's say he grabs, I clear, up, and then now instead of sweeping, I'm going to bring my leg up, bring it to the side of the knee, and that's for the smaller gals in the audience. Remember I told you it gets a bigger guy, you want to take the knee out that way. That's called honey gosh. Honey uh, means springing and gosh means hip. Springing hip throw. Boom, right there. 
That's why clipping's illegal in American football. You can break that knee. 80 pounds of pressure break a human kneecap on the side. So that's a different kind of a throw where you're kicking the side of the leg. It's very quite nasty. Mommy. All right, so, uh, you got something different. seen as used as a counter now. Uh, he grabs. I'm going to strike clear. I'm going to step in across his body nice and tight and keep my, my spine nice and straight. And here is the throw comes from the turning of my spine. Don Sekinagi in Japanese means slinging a big rock. Throwing a big rock. Again. Up. This is up a, a shoulder grab. A belt grab or something. Off the grab. Or he's pushing it in. Pushing it out. <laughs> Same grab. This time due to Gonseki on the non-grabbing arm. He's going to grab Sir. Sure. We're going to see. Another arm doesn't matter. It's like, oh, whoa. This is called Nagare. When you get good at this, you start doing this without thinking. Mushin, no mind, no thought. You just do it. You will become the art. You're working on no longer, well, what do I do now? I said, beginners, I step here, my hand goes here. And, well, we all do that from the beginning. But when you get start to get good, you start to start looking like a martial art as opposed to being a martial practitioner. So you're, what's an artist? Somebody who can create. The Martin's actually creating stuff. As I'm telling him, I'm going to see this. Let me see this. Yeah, he's doing it. So I have three, uh, three kicks prepared for you. You want to see some more? Uh, let me see, um, let me see Hani Ghosh off of a kick. Sir? Let me see Don Sekinagi off of a kick. Sir? Take it off a round kick. Good. I don't care if I know. We've all been point. there. I'm not, I empathize with you. I know. I'm not this Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice! Keep going! <laughs> Keep going. Lauren likes that one. I think that's your own yeah. <laughs> Show that one again. We love this I one. Was this is a one. cross. This is slow motion. Tell me what you're doing. Teach uh, well, basically what I'm doing right now is instead of me checking as you've seen me do before, coming into, into this position, what I'm doing is now I'm just bringing my leg up across. It's almost like a crescent kick. And I'm going to make contact with his hip crease or right above his knee when he's coming around with that round kick as he comes. I'll Cody, what does that feel like? Oh, painful. Oh, it's it's right on the and, and the harder he kicks, yeah. the worse it hurts. Good. Nice. Let me see you do against a straight kick. Do that shin check when you do the foot. Straight kick. Straight kick. Oh! <laughs> that to the audience. Cody, explain that to the audience as the receiver of that. Marlon, tell him why it hurts. What you doing? Uh, well, basically what I'm doing here is I'm just jamming him in a section where he's not expecting to have any contact. Uh, as people who know how to strike, there's a small area of target that we expect the strike to be in. Everything before and after that is or especially before that, is relaxed. And so he's got a relaxed leg. When I come here, I'm jabbing my heel right across the shin bone, not very much muscle all across the shin bone, but we do have lots of nerve endings there. Right, so which is why it's an extremely jarring, oh. even when he's kicking slow. Uh, very painful, very jarring, and allows uh, um, myself to go in 
and do different style takedowns. So, uh, see, those were kicks. Right. We did the front kick. Uh, one that I like, it's kind of a bit of a handcuff. Uh, as, as he comes in for that straight kick, I like to check it. I like to slide his foot out, right? And then possibly just do a, uh, what would you call it, a knee check? Or, yeah, yeah. So I like that. Clearing, pulling his leg off balance one more time. He's going to kick right up. Thank you. And again, up. He loses balance. Now I have his back. He's getting pulled. When he did the pull, it pulled the pull down again. Sir? Watch how he moves his body out of the way so he, that coat doesn't land on him. We worked this with the kids the other night, and I told him, don't let the guy fall on you. That's really important. So he's controlling the what? The space. Distance. Distance. What's the three most important factors in the fight? Distance. Distance. Timing. 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 That's it. Again. Cody knows how to fall correctly. Imagine if the bad guy was trying to hurt you and you threw him down from behind like that. What's he going to hit? Clunk. The ground will knock him out better than you can. That's a quote from Matsumi. The round kick is a very common kick to see it a lot because of things like MMA. Uh, so as he's going to throw a round kick to my body, I'm going to give him that target. Right? Notice what I'm doing is I'm lifting my arms up. To one side. I don't want him to kick me with the lead leg, so I want him to kick me with the rear leg. So I'm giving him a nice juicy target, my rib cage. As he's here, I'm going to do that entering and turning motion that we worked on earlier today, if you guys were doing with the knives. And now I can control up here his hip, his Achilles tendon. Right? This is a really great. Timing technique. It's that circuit move we did. This is a more advanced way of doing it. Do it again. This is a really cool technique. Catching it, spinning, dropping his leg. He's like that Gonseki Nagi that he threw, did earlier, that forward throw, only he's grabbing the leg and throwing him as opposed to the shoulder. One more time. Slow, fast. Fast. Yes, sir. Hey. See, it's good to learn how to fall correctly. Right? Let Go it to out. Learn how to fall correctly. Oh, yeah. Good falling is a good thing to die to. You can key eye. So, uh, side kick. Side kick is one that we see sometimes more and more. This is a more of a, a taekwondo stuff. Um, karate style kick. As he comes in, he's going to shoot that straight right down the middle. And I can generally tell a person who's going to do a side kick by the pilot he's standing. If he's squared off to me, I know he's not going to throw one. But if I see the person kind of standing this way, then I'm instantly going to put my hands up, give him a nice big juicy target right in the, in the middle, so as he comes in, I'm going to catch it, pull him off balance, get a hook, and control. Watch his distancing on this. Distance. He takes the distance, controls it. Okay. A, a henka that I like because I also like doing grappling is when I'm in this position, knee bars come in quite easily. There you go. That's right. So breaking the leg, breaking the knee is just something that I like, which is what I love about ninjutsu. But if you do other arts, they just blend in well with each other. So you're not stuck to going, this is the only thing you can do. It's about evolution. It's about learning new things. So that's one thing that I really enjoy about it. Now, another one is the back kick. A uh, couple things I like about the back kick as he comes in, I'll shoot it, I'll catch. I won't do this one, but I know you like it. Catch and break. Come again. <laughs> With more room. Yes. With I'll more room. Yes. I want them to appreciate this. I'll catch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull his arm right to his groin. I'm going to break his elbow using his own groin. <laughs> We're not going to mention what happens to the groin when that yes. gets slapped up there. It doesn't feel good. But one of the highest level techniques that I've had the pleasure of learning is when he does that back kick, ah. is to kick him in the butt. <laughs> kick him. Give him another back kick, Cody. Show him how fast you are. Oh. <laughs> See how that works? Because you know, it's from a physics standpoint, we do it slow motion. Cody's got to spin. 360, Marlon can stay where he is and just tap him lightly, tap him lightly. Quick kick him. That's all he's got to do, once again. That's all he's got to do is time it. Can't get the kick off. That's 
Then now, I want you to do the same check, then follow up with a follow-up and take them out. Sir? Bang, there you go. There it is. Very nice. Good job. Good job. Combo stuff prepared. Um, where are you going? Good. What's more? <laughs> okay. okay. Give me a off gun sight. See if you can do a, some kind of a rear throw counter or a wrist lock. Off gun sight. Anything yes, else? <laughs> going. Good. Nice. Good. Okay. Keep going. Don't stop in the little technique. Whatever you're doing, just do it. Good. Arm bar. Very nice. Okay. Hi. Yes. Something else. Good. Good. Rear sweep. Okay, good. See, what I'm trying to do is not engage his conscious mind. So you, again, when you start getting good, like Marlon is, you're, you're start pulling these things out of your hat. Oh. Because you've done all this so many, many, many times that you just feel where you need to be. Oh, he's here. I know I've got to go a certain way to feel what's going. It's like dancing. When you dance with your partner, you're working in synchronization. Yes, sir. That person moves you, or you're leading, they're following, or they're leading, you're following. It's all like a dance. It should look like that. A sacrifice throw against the God Seki Nage. Lots of ways to counter these. And that's the fun, I think, of doing martial arts, no matter what style. I know it is grappling. There's a lot of different variations, and <coughs> Shotokan sure has all that, too. Uh, but it's like, the, oh, now we get into the fun part. Let's try this variation. What's, what if he does this? What if he holds the gun sideways? Or whatever. Okay, yes, sir. let's do Hanbo now. Yes, sir. Um, your street combines the three postures, basic one with the with Hanbo. One is here, which would be natural if you're wondering with the cane. Uh, if uh, one is across the leg, the one is behind the back. Uh, we're going to start off here. You're going to do some straight thrust. So as he comes here, I'm going to clear. I'm going to strike. And I'm going to finish it off. That's why we use flexible hondos. <laughs> they don't hurt as much. Imagine a hickory cane smacking up inside your hand or up on the choke. So as I clear, I clear the knife and I spread them in the throat and I'm using the knife edge of my hand to then reach behind and I spin them down. Then I squeeze. It's, it's called a shime waza, choking technique. Finish, finish the, the technique. Uh, another technique that I kind of uh, like is if you start in this position here again, he comes in and I'll clear and then get rid of the knife to strike him. I'm going to take him down. Once more, a little more slowly, explain what's going on. Josh, things going so on. So I'm clearing here in a circular motion. First, I clear my body out of the way. I clear and strike the hand out to put it in distance to strike with the end of the hango. As I do that, I can just strike again. And I'm going to, again, step in. He's leveraging. And I'm going to leverage against his thigh to take him down. Another one that I, that I like is, which is really, really interesting because it drops his guard because my hands are behind my back. So as I'm here, he's going to do the same thing. I stand on the move and strike. Good so actor. Thank you, sir. Another thing when, in modern jiu-jitsu, again, we're not Navy SEALs or, you know, any equivalent you might have here in Canada with, you know, going behind <coughs> enemy lines and slitting throats. So if you notice the striking we're going to do, it's not lethal. If he's hitting, he's hitting the wrist, it's going to maybe break the bones of the hand, but it's not lethal. He might hit an elbow, might hit a shoulder. We try to stay away from headshots, because that causes more damage. And then you've got legal issues, la da 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 But you, believe me, if you, Cody will tell you, get hit with that, the back of the hand, even with that pad, it yeah. doesn't feel really great. Getting smacked in the knees. Uh, on the DVDs that, um, I've got a whole DVD on using the Hanbo, and I, take a big slow motion sequence showing targets to hit. Elbows, wrists, back of the hand, shins, side of the knee. These are non-lethal, but boy, you smack something with a wooden stick, side of their thigh, side of their knee, on the elbow, it's gonna create results. So we try to stay away from 
non-lethal cutting. We, we stay away from uh, cutting arteries and veins. We stay away from hitting heads and throats and things like that might be uh, considered lethal. Yes, sir. Continue. Uh, we can use leveraging in different parts of the body. So say he goes to stab me again, and now I'm going to clear and I'm going to strike him right in the ribs, just like uh, Master Merha explained. I'm going to distract him by popping him in the jaw a little bit, and now I'm going to leverage using uh, his brachial nerve and his back to take him down. Once more. So you can use different parts of the body to leverage, uh, leverage a person uh, down. Now, one that I like is a lot of times if you're just kind of standing here, kind of seems same thing with, with this come on. This one doesn't seem too threatening. If I'm standing here with my cane, it seems a little more different, right? Or with my umbrella. But the fact that I'm here, he's going to go for that. And this is a uh, head cusser. <laughs> Show it again. Slow motion. Watch his foot with the hanbo. He kicks the hanbo right to the groin. Use his foot project. There's an overhead strike circularly. And there's the hip lever with reverse grip. Very nice. Um, so there's many different things you do that with an eye against other weapons, against uh, flexible weapons or uh, other hanbo, say other stick type. There's, there's basic striking. Let's do hip inside hip lever. Yes, sir. You did outside, let's do the inside. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's a great, very nice. Uh, can you do the inside hip lever to the. Um, oh, the hip lever. Hip yes, lever, yes, hip yes, lever. Yes, I did make myself clear. So. Straight thrust. Good. 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 That's outside. Do the other way, just go the other way. Okay. Switching hand? No. I'm sorry. I'm Go to the outside of the strike. Ah, okay. And hit it with the left hand. Left hand to the ribs. Left Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, yes. that's also a little bit. Something here. Ah, sir. Yes. You come up in, strike, or come up in, lock. Yes, sir. Oh, I know you know it. <laughs> There it is. Turn palm up. There you go. Once more. Good. Moving, moves away. Bam. Hits. Palm up. Good. Again. One more time. Now, again, it's a very light stick, so it's sort of like a noodle. But a heavier stick, it's easier to do. Okay. Very nice. Next. That way you hip leg is inside outside. Um, so basic striking with the uh, with the hondo, the thing that I like about it is uh, unlike other arts, like I said before, that uh, had a lot of flowery things. So for example, if you scream up, right? I got all, all these big motions. But when I'm here and I'm doing this, basically what's happening here is uh, all of my motions come from this command, so I'll do sideways. Striking, angular, striking, right? I'll do vertical striking. And at no point in time have I released my hands from this position. Does that make sense? So it's, it's very, very neat that a lot of the techniques happen here, strike here, from this basic position. Well, that is what I had to show you with the... Uh, Let's do some single hand strikes yes, against, the, against the bag. So, uh, please hold me up. I'm going to... I agree. This one, so I have this strike. And cross. All right, so you can do a two hand, single hand. Very nice. Okay, good job. This is known as a Kasari Fundo. Uh, Kasari Fundo is a, a, a weighted chain. Um, this one is not a chain. Or, uh, it does have a little bit of weight to it. But the same kind of idea with those stripes as we're here. Um, it's a little bit different because it's a, it's a flexible tool. I have to be able to keep in mind that when I'm striking, if I, if I just kind of strike, 
Notice how it bounces right back and it gets me. This is a way to change. I'm going to hurt myself. So there's uh, there's quite a little bit of, uh, of technique to end up striking. So we do basic striking. I move my body out of the way. Right? I strike and I get my body out of the way. As I'm hitting, I'll use the back end of my hand to throw it through and let it follow through with the strikes. Okay. Now it's a very, very good tool because this represents a belt. Very easy to use. Everyone's got one most of the time. Uh, so you always have it on you, Master Mayor. Just took his up. <laughs> uh, so I have a belt in my hand. It's, uh, and generally what will end up happening is that I'll tuck in this side and I'll have <laughs> the lead in on this I side. I wear that belt. Any belt, you take it off, you get an instant tool for striking your traffic. So, Really? Um, so if he says uh, he's, he's uh, throw say, a straight jab, I can clear it, the jab using the sorry, window or the, be or the belt, so the punches, I can come in, I can distract them with a strut to the temple, and then control, take them down, and put them to sleep. Right? So. One more time, he comes in, I hit the strap. Right? Now it's across his jaw. It's very painful. Right? Both very good positions to be in uh, to control. That's going on the outside. I can go on in on the inside. So as he punches, I'll clear and I'll hit with a headbutt and I'll throw this, loop it big over his head take them over, and again, finish. Very nice. That was a good roll. So he throws that cross, I hear, I headbutt, I throw the loop over his head, because I know where he's going to be, and get deep, and finish the choke. I can trap and control with these. So as conscience, I can control control. Now I have both of his arms locked, which make throws much easier. Much it's the hard easier to slap to out. He's got both hands tied up. So using a, a weighted chain or your belt is a very, very good tool that most people carry with them. So this is one of the things that I quite enjoy. Thank you, sir. And for last, if I can have Roger. Sure. Come up. All right. I'm going to use Roger. I mean, I use the cardboard here. So before we get started, let's this. Let's this. Now, we're using a real blade now. This is a live blade. We practice cutting. Uh, just show cutting uh, to the audience in the different directions. Just so do it in shadow cutting. You need to our stab and slices. So as I'm here, I'm working all of these different angles of penetrating and cutting, penetrating and cutting. Okay, face me into it, please, so we get the camera. Cutting down, cutting up, cutting sideways, straight down. Nine different angles. Okay, back up a little bit, face the audience. Straight in thrust, sideways, left and right, downward angles, right and left, upward angles. There you go. That's pretty much it. Okay, so the idea with cutting is non-lethal cutting. Uh, unlike other styles, which are a lot of fun, I practice them, I'm not saying don't. I do them all the time. However, a lot of the ideals are always cutting major arteries, major veins, and killing a person. What we're doing with this is practicing, so if we need to escalate to the point of having to dis disarm someone and incapacitate them, we want to do it temporarily and not permanently, okay? So from here, we're going to start off with some basic strikes, so vertical, horizontal cutting, right? So I can penetrate and cut. Hold the board hardware tight. Okay, I'm going to do some... Hey, now watch what he's doing. He's, a whole second, he's inserting the knife and then ripping. So if you have to cut somebody, you insert the weapon in by using his body, sinking his knees, you can cut horizontally, downward angle, upward angle, etc. A couple more. Good. 
punching, punching, cutting up. Very good. Thank you. So that is what I have for you today, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, now we do. Uh, this goes counter. This counter. 